So it's a double signing for Celtic today. Aaron Moy joins as well as Maura Dientz joining from Lorient in France. Let's get into the transfer video. So before I get into the transfer video, I want to say a massive thank you to the One Football app for sponsoring this video. The One Football app is your one-stop shop for all your football goodness. Download the One Football app using the code in the description below and you will get the best football app on the market for absolutely free. On the One Football app, you can subscribe to the team you support. It will give you one-stop shop for all of your football goodness. Transfer news, fixtures, squad updates, everything you, you need on the team that you support available now in the one place. So download the One Football app now using the link in the description below. So it's a double signing for Celtic today. Aaron Moy joining on a free transfer and Moritz Jens joining from Lorient. Immediate loan with an option to buy is what is being reported with the Jens deal. I'll start with Aaron Moy. I wrote about Moy and what he might bring to the panel on the Breakdown Inc, the brand new website, which you can get in the link in the description below as well if you want to check that article out. But I watched a lot of Moy when he was in the Premier League, when he was in the Championship as well with Huddersfield Town, came up into the Premier League with Huddersfield Town and then signed permanently for them, then eventually got a move to Brighton. Didn't last very long at Brighton, but that wasn't really his fault. Uh, Shanghai actually activated his transfer clause in his contract, so. I mean, Brighton didn't really try too hard to keep him either way, but he was 29 going 30 at that point in time. Now, what kind of player is Moy? Moy is a very tidy centre midfielder. He is good on the ball, got a very good passing range in terms of his ability to create chances, and he's an immediate goal threat as well at times. He, he took set pieces for Huddersfield when he was there. He's good on uh, free kicks, he's good on corners, and he took their penalties as well. So he is someone who is calm under pressure and is a very good, uh, let's call him a very good footballer, if you want to go with the very basic tense of what he's going to bring. He's tidy on the ball, he's got a good passing range, and he's a good, strong centre midfielder. What kind of position does he play? Well, he played more of an attacking role when he was with Huddersfield and when he was with Brighton, but that was a young Aaron Moy, that was an Aaron Moy in his prime. We are getting a 31 going 32, in I think it's September, November time when he's 32, that's what Celtic are getting. So whether or not he's going to be the player that was at Huddersfield a number of years ago and played under Ange in Australia, that remains to be seen. What we can say is he's an experienced player who has played in the Premier League, has played international level. So he's no Joe Bloggs. He is a player with good pedigree there. What will he bring to the team that is not already there? So I sort of outlined this in my article. I can see a number of roles for Aaron Moy at Celtic, whether or not he's going to be a backup to Cal McGregor, there's always the potential there. But in terms of what does he bring differently as I get attacked by a fucking wasp because I'm doing this outside, go away. What does he bring differently to the Celtic panel? Well, I can see him playing as a deep lying number six in a different way to Cal McGregor. So Cal McGregor is an all action number six. He's in possession, he's creating chances, he's creating play, he's dictating the pace. What I would see with Moy is a very different number six role in terms of what he's doing. I would see him solely as a guy to be the outlet for Celtic's possessional play. So keeping possession, controlling the pace, speeding it up when you need to speed it up, slowing it down when you need to slow it down. Think what Luka Modric does at Real Madrid, what Pirlo previously would have done at AC Milan. I'm not saying Aaron Moy is either of those players. What I'm saying is he has the capabilities to do that role, to do it well and to do it at a strong level. So I'm interested to see if that's the approach that Ange is going to take in the Champions League rather than go with, say, a CDM, a centre defensive midfielder, a defensively mind midfielder. Will he go with someone like Moy who's going to be able to control the pace of the game, keep Celtic in possession for longer and that way by keeping the ball you know, you're not getting attacked. So I mean, the, sometimes attack is the best form of defense. Possessional play can often be quite defensive. So Aaron Moy could play that deep lying number six role, sort of the playmaking number six. He could also play the number eight role. He has been deployed as a number eight and as attacking midfielder. So I actually think that McGregor, Moy, and 
uh, the likes of Matt O'Reilly, would be a very good trio in uh, the SPFL as well against low block teams. Aaron Moy is a very creative player when it comes to unlocking defences. He played at a lower level team in the Premier League, so obviously he wasn't doing all of the attacking while he was there, but he was very good at creating chances. So if a team's lying deep, then the likes of Cal McGregor, Aaron Moy and Matt O'Reilly should have enough to be able to pick out those passes. Uh, the likes of Moy's passing range is going to be very good for Kyogo who's going to be running in behind or the wingers who's going to be running in behind. I think that's going to work quite well. And then you've also got the third option for me, which is playing a 4-2-3-1, which Ange has done previously. So there's potential for him to move into this as well and move Cal McGregor and Aaron Moy as the two number six in the, that double pivot. That way you've got sort of like the all action midfielder, Cal McGregor's gonna be doing a bit more defending and you've also got that added benefit of having someone who's really good in possession and got, has got a really good uh, outlook and a good passing range that can pick out balls early doors and control the pace of the game as well, be that link between the midfield and the forward line. That's three of the options that I can see with Aaron Moy. Look, in the long term, this seems to be a transfer of convenience. Celtic need players, Celtic need midfielders in particular after signing near Beaton and a couple of other players. They need bodies in there. Aaron Moy is a body, he's coming in for free and he is experienced to the point where you trust him in the likes of the Champions League or at least the Europa League if Celtic don't make it too far in the Champions League. So long term, you know, you could scream and go mad and say this is the board lacking uh, any vision or same old story. I would veer towards the more optimistic side with this, that this is an opportunity to bring in a player on free in a position that Celtic need to fill. And they've filled it with a pretty good player who you know, it's a short-term contract. He's not going to be there forever. So I think it is convenience in terms of the Celtic side in bringing him in, but I don't see that as a bad thing either. I do expect Celtic to potentially bring in one more player in midfield. So that is Aaron Moy, who has signed. The second signing of the day was Morris Jens, who comes in as a centre-back. He's on loan with an option to buy. He's coming in from Laurent in league on. He is a player that Celtic are familiar with. They have been familiar with for a number of years now, if you remember back to last year's transfer window, he was linked with Celtic as well. Now, interesting enough, I had a look back at when he was linked last with Celtic. He was actually linked as a right centre back slash right back. So it would have been probably pre Juranovic when he came in. And <clears throat> that for me is a little bit worrying because if you look at Celtic's defence, what are you thinking that they need? They probably need a left centre back at least as a backup to Starfelt, if not being an improvement on Starfelt. Jens probably is not that unless he's going to be somebody who you know transitions over to the left hand side. What does this mean for players who's already at the club? Stephen Welsh potentially might leave. Julian, I know the Celt that Celtic are actively trying to find him a move away after his previous move away fell through. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens on that front, on those two players fronts with uh, Jens coming in but I don't think Celtic should be selling both of them Stephen Welsh he has potential to improve at least at SPFL level he is competent so if you had Jens you had Welsh you had uh, Carmen Carter Vickers and you have Starfelt that's four options that you have at centre back rather than leaving yourself short if one of them gets injured what kind of player is Jens well I'm not going to pretend that I've watched him in league on but I've read quite a bit about him over the last 24 hours he seems to be a guy who is quite good at defending at the basics of defending at tackling at heading at a slide tackling and being a defender not quite as good when it comes to positional or possessional play rather so not very good on the ball that's not really what Celtic need at this point in time Starfelt's not the best on the ball either so you need a player that's you know almost ready-made to come in and play a Champions League level you need someone who is comfortable enough on the ball so I'm not quite sure that Jens is going to be that person he is someone that Celtic looked at didn't confirm the signing last year and they just seem to leave it on the doorstep and have revisited it whether or not that's because you know convenience once again they have already scouted this player they know he was pretty good or whether or not that Ange has actually approved on him and you know he's not saying get him in just to get extra bodies in a centre back so look two extra bodies coming in brings the transfer tally up to seven for this year if you're counting 
Cameron Carter Vickers and Jota, you know, they were already at the club. But in positions that you need, in positions that Celtic need depth, whether or not this is Celtic's business done for the summer, I highly, highly doubt it. But interesting enough, and said that these two signings, that they were thinking that two signings would be coming in in the next week. And true to his word, two signings have come in just a couple of days after Ange had said that. So he's a man of his word, at least. will be very interesting to see what happens over the next couple of weeks. What do you think of the two signings? Do you think Moy is good enough for a starting place in the Celtic team? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to download the OneFootball app, which you can get in the link in the description below. Huddle Breakdown will be with you tomorrow in your podcast and on YouTube as well. So stay tuned for that. We'll chat to you later. Good luck.